we have a very special person, um, Juan, who has allowed us to use his facility to have this very important um, event for um, improving our balance, preventing falls, and giving you the fall tips that we can use every day in life. We can use them in assisted livings, we can use them in nursing homes, um, we can use them in um, at home care. So it pertains to everyone, not just the old or the middle aged, but also the young. And um, so we're going to talk about that today. Um, next, I would like to. I would tell you about the presenters. We have uh, Bonnie Akerson here, who's part of Private Home here. She does the marketing. And she works pretty much with Kwan and his uh, staff um, in all our presentations for fall prevention. Harry DeMarcus is um, our mogul for um, social media. And um, we have, of course, Kwan, who is the master of Tai Chi, and who we're very grateful to uh, allowing us to be here today. In your package, you have a agenda of everything we're gonna to cover today. So these are pretty much the takeaways. We're gonna talk about statistics of the elderly in falls. We're gonna talk about tips in which we can prevent falls. We're gonna talk on how to get up from a fall by demonstrating how we do it. Sometimes if you're seeing it on a diagram, it isn't as wonderful or as effective as if you see it in person. Um, then we're going to talk about the meaning of Tai Chi and how Tai Chi helps us to balance our um, movements in the prevention of falls. And then we're also going to talk about examples of how mobility and balance make a difference in every way we function in a daily basis. So September is Fall Prevention Awareness Month. And it's the first day of everyone beginning to realize that we fall every second and the statistics are unbelievable. We have, um, in 2011, 23,000 people were in the study and they found that 1% over age 65 died and 2.4 million were treated in emergency rooms for falls. Now that's, that's alarming. 30% of these 65 age and over fall at least once a year. And we, by the way, 10,000 people turn 65 every day in this country. So you get an idea of what we're talking about. 50% of seniors 80 and over will fall at least once a year. 50% of the seniors will have hip fractures from the fall. <coughs> Then we go down to 50% of those seniors who fell are likely to fall again. And then 47% of those seniors can't get up from a fall. And 40% of the seniors are admitted to a nursing home after a fall so they can rehabilitate themselves to the way they were back before they fell in hopes that we can rehabilitate them back to the way they were before. That's what we call rehabilitation in nursing homes. A lot of nursing homes have rehab floors. That's where you go and you rehab for a time period in which Medicare will allow you or your insurance company will allow you for a certain amount of time. Then we have 30 to 50% of the seniors fear falling. People come home that have fallen, they come home from nursing homes and they're scared to death of falling again. So we say, you can get up and walk and they say, I can't walk. I can't, no I can't, I fell before, I can't walk. And they truly believe they're gonna fall again, but there's nothing wrong with them. They can't walk. Physiologically, there's nothing wrong with them. It's mental. They firmly believe that they can't. And then 50% of the seniors age 65 and over will face death from the complication of that fall. So that's quite alarming. Now let's talk about why do people fall? I bet everyone in this room knows someone that fell, right? Okay. I'll give you an example of a fall. I'm a nurse, I'm walking out of a patient's house. They turned off the lights for outside, it was eight o'clock at night, and I went over the porch into a ditch. That, that's how a lighting in a room or lighting outside can change a person's life. Just in a second, they turned off the light. 
How about impairment to the brain or Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is the muscles. It's a disease that affects your nervous system. It's a disease that affects your cognition. And when sometimes when they're walking, their muscles stiffen up and they can't they can't step, they can't move forward. And sometimes their balance goes this way or that way. So things like medical conditions, Parkinson's impaired arthritis, um, someone could be trying to button their blouse or their zipper and then they just fall over because you just lose balance. This is, this is a lot of very, um, it happens in a second. Poor vision, if you need your glasses to be adjusted, if you have cataracts and you have like a cloud over your lens in your eye and you can't see, if you have hearing problems, and sometimes it creates confusion if you have hearing problems. You can't hear them saying, watch out, there's water on the floor, or, you know, um, uh, another kind of instruction, you can't find, you got confused. Unfamiliar environment can create confusion. If you have an elderly person that has not been over someone's house and is walking, and there's a little step, just a tiny step, they fall over it. Because they're unaware of it. They're unfamiliar with the surroundings. Anesthesia and medication can make you very disoriented because it, it's medication that puts you to sleep, medication that anesthetizes certain parts of your body and it causes a disorientation. Physiological changes in normal age, just normal aging. Your feet, your feet change. Does anybody ever notice, you know, from year to year, your feet change, your balance changes. Um, you know, you get taller, you get shorter, you get fatter, you get skinnier. I mean, everything changes as you age. And normal aging is, um, it's hard to keep up with the normal, healthy bone structure that we have when we age. Um, and balance problems. It could be middle ear, someone was telling me, you know, they fell. It could be middle ear, it could be medication. It could be many different things, but we have to be, we have to be aware of them. We don't think of these things every day. We don't think that some of the medications can cause dizziness or confusion or slow. You just think it's your fault. You know, you're put on a, a new medication like, say, a diuretic, and you're urinating a lot, you're losing a lot of fluid, you become dehydrated, you might get dizzy, and you might lose your balance. Well, you think you were just clumsy? No. Think about other things that are affecting your body. Maybe your medication, maybe you're not drinking enough water, maybe you're not replacing the potassium. How about orange juice when you're taking a diuretic, or a banana? or cantaloupe, those are the things that have potassium. Replacing what you're losing in your body is very important to remain with your balance so you don't become disoriented or confused or dizzy, those are the kind. Blood pressure medication is the same kind of situation. People get up out of a chair like this and they get dizzy. It's, that, it's the blood pressure from a from one reading to another, as the blood flows throughout your body. You have carotid arteries, you have blood flow to your brain from your heart. So there's all kinds of things that can affect how your balance is. Muscle relaxants. Muscle relaxants, they will relax your muscles to a point where if you go to step, you might not feel that, you know, that step and you lose your balance. Um, sleeping pills. Herbal teas are wonderful, but sometimes they might counteract with what you're taking for a medication for a certain disease that you have. So always ask the pharmacist or ask your doctor or go online and look and see. And if you think it is, call your doctor or call your pharmacist or consult with your medical professional. Those people know some of the reasons why these things are happening, and some don't. So that's why you have to be proactive, you have to be your own advocate, and you have to advocate for yourself and for your loved ones. Okay. Um, there was a woman, she had a stroke, and um, she, did, she didn't have a severe stroke, so she just had a little weakness on her left side. So when she got up off the chair, her, left, her weakness was on her right side, so she had a little coffee table here with a, with a lamp, 
and she went to turn it off, okay, because she's capable and she is recovered. But when she went to turn it off and she got up, she got dizzy and she went down. She couldn't understand. Why did that happen? How did that happen? You know, it's little things like that because she went down like this, it was too low, it came up quickly, and her, her right side was weak, so she went down. How about the other lady? Now, these are true stories. She's in a chair, and they have a remote control. Okay, the remote brings you up to a standing position. Everybody was perfectly, perfectly happy that she was safe in the chair. The remote was going to lift her. Nobody had to be home with her. She fell out of the chair, <clears throat> hit her head on the coffee table, and died. So, you, you know, you never know. It's these kinds of freak accidents. She got up, you know, and she probably got disoriented when she got to the top. She didn't know. Um, she was elderly, and she fell, and, and she died. So, you know, it's like tripping and sliding. One man walked into the bank. Okay, this was in Florida. There was water on the floor. He didn't see it. We don't usually, you know, we walk like this, so we don't like walk like this. So he was walking in the bank with his wife. He slipped, hit his head, and he died. Immediately, hey, he had um, hemorrhaging in her brain and a blood clot. It's these, it's the things that we don't think about when we walk into supermarkets in the winter time, into stores in the winter time where there's water all over the the, the floor and on the rug. How about somebody goes into a, a store and they spill a bottle of something and nobody cleans it up? You gotta say, please call the manager. Someone please clean that because you know what? Somebody's gonna fall. And it happens all the time, every day. Stairway, stairways, unsecured carpets. Sometimes the stairs, it's hard to see where the next step is. And then you, you, know, you get to the bottom and you, you miss one. It happens a lot if it's not clearly marked, the steps. I, you know, poor judgment, slow reflexes. Um, this woman, she was 90s, 92, she's walking down the stairs and she decides she's gonna jump. The, the, she's gonna forget about the, the two on the bottom. Poor judgment. She had dementia. She didn't know she had dementia. She didn't know that she was 92 and you can't jump down steps. You're not supposed to. You can't do it. She was adorable. I mean, I loved her to death, but I said, oh my God, why did you do that? She said, because I could. So I was with her, but you know, I mean, judgment, poor judgment. Um, okay, here's another one, improper bed height. And I mean, Rachel can verify this one. The lady's bed was too low. It wasn't at the proper height so that she could get up. She was tall. So uh, something as small as this, improper bed height, can impair a person from getting up, transferring, being mobile. And the more you try, the chances of you falling are greater. And so what she did was fell. How about in hospitals or nursing homes, or even at home, the person is on this beautiful mattress. It's silk, it's great, it's gorgeous. And he goes, he's going to get up, and he's a big man, and he goes to the side of the bed and shh, right off the bed. And he falls. And his wife said, those sheets were so nice. Yeah, they were nice, but they were too slippery. And he didn't have anything to hold on to. So it's little things that make a big difference with bed height, bed. Slow rate reflex is another thing, the inability to move. If you have arthritis, if you have Parkinson's disease, if you have a neuro neurological, or if you have diabetes, if you have inflammation, if you have nerve damage, you sometimes cannot move as quickly from the spot where the hazard is and you fall because you move too quickly and you're not balanced. Okay. Drinking alcohol, I mean this is fun, he's having fun, he's got the alcohol and the cigar, 
but he's on a lot of medication, so later on he could fall. But he'll still have fun. <laughs> um, um, opening dresser drawers and cabinet drawers, okay? Um, that's another thing that might cause an unbalance. High patients to nurse ratio in nursing homes. Okay, if you have too many patients and not enough nurses, and you can't get out of bed if you have an injury or if you have a paralysis, if you have a weakness in your condition, you may try to do it yourself because you feel good. I mean, you feel like you can do it, but you forget that your mobility is impaired. So you get up and you're gonna fall. Next, we'd like to talk about how do we keep our bones healthy? All right, what, what do you do to keep your bones healthy? I take Kel's. Caltrate and uh, vitamin D. Okay, very good. So she wins the prize for today. All right, so calcium and vitamin D are very helpful. Uh, vitamin K is very helpful in um, intake of calcium. Um, what else is good for, um, do you know what else is good for calcium? What do you, to drink or to eat or? Uh, no. Okay, milk is actually not the best. Okay, um, kale and spinach and some other green leafy vegetables have 40 times more effectiveness in calcium than a glass of milk. Okay, and we're, we can get into milk big time with all that's going on with milk. But um, there are other things like salmon, rainbow trout, soybean, uh, kale, um, white beans and sardines. And the vitamin D, you can get sunlight, you can get the cold water fish, uh, mushrooms, tofu, eggs, so there's other ideas, vitamin K1 and 2, green leafy vegetables, hard cheeses, chicken, um, egg yolk. I mean, there's a various, various ways of doing it. You can go and you can lift weights, you can walk, you can swim, you can do dancing, um, you can do all kinds of things to improve bone health. Uh, have a bone density test if you feel as though you're over 40 years old and you feel like you have osteoporosis in your family, your grandmother had it, your mother had it, your sister has it. It's a good idea to check it out. Um, and then talk with your doctor about medication to make your bones stronger. And then ask him what are the side effects if he decides to give you any medication for your bones. Now in your packets, we have the, the, the tools. Can you pull it out? Where's the I want to talk about that. Um, there is something else I want to talk about. Now, if you're, uh, most falls will, will occur in a bathroom, okay? So if you have an elderly person at home that needs to get off of a toilet, the height has to be um, at a very good height for getting his self up or herself up. You have to have arms, you have to have something to hold on. Usually you don't want to hold on to a towel rack or a toilet paper holder because they're not that safe. You really want to get um, what they call grab bars or um, some sort of professionally installed bars, all right? If you're in a shower, um, you want to get grab bars. There's metal ones. There's all kinds of, um, you can get them from pharmacies, medical supply places. You can have your maintenance um, carpenter buy them at Home Depot. You can get them installed. Now, if you don't have that capability, you can get these and you can buy them online or you can buy them at CVS or Walgreens. And a lot of times they'll fall down. But if you get the Vaseline, the good old fashioned Vaseline, and you take a little bit and just rub it, okay, rub it, clean the surface, dry the surface, and stick it on, close it, it will never come off. All right? A chemist taught me that. They were falling off, and I asked him, why? He said, you have to know about the Vaseline. <laughs> All right? Um, this is another thing I would like to talk to you about. Um, if your shoes, if you don't have like really good shoes, you know that will, like if you, you're going in a supermarket, you know how it's slippery in there sometimes. Or if you're going out to a restaurant, I've seen a lot of people fall in restaurants, oh my God. They're walking with heels, beautiful, beautiful, crash. 
because the bottom of their, their shoes or their boots, they don't have these grips. If you put one on each foot, it will prevent you because it's a hard uh, surface and it grips on the floor so you don't fall. And these are like, you can buy these at Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, I forgot Rite Aid, Rite Aid. Um, but it's, you know, it's only like $2.50 maybe, $2, $2.50, something like that. It's not expensive and it will stop you from falling. Especially if you're buying new shoes and you're all dressed up, even boots. A lot of people fall with the boots if they're all dressed up. Okay. Now next, I'd like to talk about some of these fall risk. Um, we're not going to go over all of them because we don't have time. How are we doing for time? Okay. Like, yeah, maybe 10 minutes, Mary. Okay. So we're going to, let me just go back a little bit. 10, 15. Okay. This is the tool. Everyone can take these home with you. And so what you're going to do is called the Fall Risk Assessment Tool. You're going to use this to grade the person that you're evaluating on whether or not they are in jeopardy of falling or whether they're quite capable of strong balance or whether they're in between their in between weakness mild, moderate, or severe. So you're going to use this as a tool. And what it's going to do is you get an age of 65 plus, and a diagnosis, you'll, get, you'll ask them about a diagnosis, but you only use the diagnosis that the doctor gives you. Like some people will say, I have this and this and that, but not necessarily. The doctor, like high blood pressure or um, cardiovascular disease or high, you know, high cholesterol, that is what the doctor says. So that's what you would write down. And then you're going to go into, like, um, have they had falls before, okay? And um, an unintentional change in a position resulting in coming to rest on the ground or low. So this is if they've fallen within the last three months. And you're going to put a grade, you're going to grade it like one, two, one, three, four. You're going to put one for each, each entity, okay? And then we're going to look at, say, incontinence. How long did it take them to get to the bathroom? All right, was it in a timely manner? Did they make it to the bathroom or did they have incontinence? And then you're going to grade them on their visual impairment, okay? Do they have macular degeneration or uh, retinopathy due to diabetes? Are they able to um, see the distance between where they're going, okay? But is their night vision um, not, not wearing glasses? or um, just not able to have lighting to see where they're going. There's different reasons for each, each entity. Um, impaired functional mobility. Okay, they, they're independent activities of daily living. They usually can get up, wash, bathe, dress themselves. Or do they need help with activities of daily living, okay? Um, ha or do they have a gait or a transfer problem? Do they have arthritis? So you're going to use all of these as simple ways to determine whether or not they're in jeopardy of falling, whether their weakness or whether their, their strength is some. Um, and, and you're going to look at this one here, four or more pharmacy prescriptions at any, at any type, okay? You're going to talk about all prescriptions that come over from the doctor, also over-the-counter medications, okay? And then drugs that are highly associated with fall risk include, but not limited to, say, sedatives, antidepressants, tranquilizers, narcotics, antihypertensive, cardiac medication. So you can see what I mean. There's so many drugs out there that people are taking that could cause just a uh, imbalance for some reason or another. All right, it might be dehydration. It might be blood pressure, uh, blood pressure changing. It could be anything. It could be a combination of medications. Um, so this is very, very big because so many people are on so many medications. Um, then we're going to talk about pain. When someone's in pain, if they have diabetes and they have um, neuropathy in their feet, and they have tingling and numbness and tingling, sometimes they can't feel that when they go to stand up. So they're in jeopardy for falling. 
Cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's and dementia, stroke patients. Stroke patients may have a little weakness on one side, okay? So they use poor judgment, okay? Decreased comprehensive impulsiveness, jumping down the stairs. The lady jumping down, impulsive. They, they, they go to do some so quickly that they lose their balance. Um, and consider patient's ability to adhere to a care plan, to follow a care plan. So if this person that you're evaluating has a score of four or more, they're considered at risk for a fall. Okay, so that's how you would use this particular tool. The next one that you have in there, you're also gonna be able to grade them, okay? And this one here is a little more detailed, but it's extremely thorough for in-home, like when, if they're, you're at home, too, you're gonna talk about cleaning the house. Okay, your target, let's talk about the target population here is your older, older adult, with or without a history of the fear of falling, okay? And how concerned are they about the possibility of falling? And for each of the following activities, circle how concerned you are and how concerned you may fall if you do this activity. And then the activities are listed in the paper that you have in front of you. And it would be, for example, cleaning the house, okay? Not at all concerned, you can clean it, somewhat concerned, fairly concerned, and very concerned, okay? And then you go along in this whole getting dressed, making simple meals, taking a bath or shower, um, going to the shop. If somebody else does your shopping for you or for that elderly person, don't put that down as far as a grade. Just skip it. Okay, so you want to, you want to be accurate. Um, walking around the neighborhood, going up and down the stairs. Going up and down stairs is very dangerous, especially if they're going down to the basement. We know a lot of our elderly people fall in the basement. Also, younger people, this is awful, fall going down the stairs and break their necks a lot of young people, because they're rushing. It's awful, it's horrible. Um, and um, getting out of a chair. Now I'm gonna demonstrate to you, if you have, this chair here is um, 10 feet from that chair, okay? So the third tool that you have in your packet, okay, is called Timed Up and Go. Okay, Carrie, want to sit there and do it? Want to sit there? You can be our, ooh, be our um, model. Okay, so we measured 10 feet from that chair, and I marked the point right here, and I show this point um, to the individual from the beginning of the test. This is your, this is your point here, all right? And if you wear glasses, you can put them on, okay? Um, if you have a cane or a walker, you can use that to walk over here, okay? And while performing this test, I want you to sit down, please. And I want you to rise from the chair that has a straight back, okay? But you can't use your arms. All right, so sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> and then when, um, then you're going to say, ready, set, go. And Bonnie, you're going to time him oh, okay. to see how many seconds it takes him to walk from that chair without using arms, getting up, walking to this... 10 foot point, this is in your thing, and walking back. Okay, all right. So tell me when you're ready. Go. Okay. Observe the way the patient walks as he turns and walks back to the chair. Stop timing him when he sits down in the chair. Took him just about eight seconds to do that. Okay, so now, if he completes the test in 20 seconds or less. It indicates that the patient is independent. If it takes 30 seconds, they're in jeopardy for a fall. Okay, they need to have some sort of evaluation by a physical therapist or an occupational therapist. So it's kind of a good little test to use. Um, and it's fun and it, you know, it doesn't cost anything. It's just getting up, you know. And you can use it and if you're, if you're concerned about someone, you know, make it fun. You know, use use that kind of a, a tool to do that. Now, um, Harry's going to demonstrate for us how do we get up from a fall. Okay. Um, how to get up from a fall. Okay. So now, do do we have a mat for him, or he's just going to lay there? Just a fall. Do we have a mat? <laughs> 
I don't want you to get all dirty, and then you'll. If he doesn't have it, that's okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. That's good. So he's gonna here. He's gonna lay down and demonstrate how do you get up from a fall. Thanks, Ned. All right. Okay. So if the people in the back can't see, you could stand up. Okay. All right. Okay, so he's down, down on the floor on his back, okay? Then he is going to sit up, okay? And then he is gonna look around and kind of evaluate what he needs to do, but he's not gonna get up quickly because if you get up the wrong way, you could get injured. And he's gonna look around and if he's hurt, he's gonna call out for help or press his 24-hour um, alert button and it's gonna call the emergency medical team and they're gonna to talk to them through the alert, the alert button. Now, if you're with someone and they fall, don't try to get them up because there have been situations where they have had a fracture, when you went to lift them up, they died. They went into shock. So don't try to lift someone up. Call for help, but if, if they're okay, and they can do it themselves, because you don't wanna get sued. You know. All right, so next thing he's gonna do is he is going to look around and he's gonna see if there's a sturdy chair in place or furniture or the bottom of maybe a steps or stairs. So he finds the chair, okay. And then what he's gonna do is gonna roll over onto his side by, he's gonna turn his head, his shoulder, and his hip all in one unit, okay. That's what he's gonna, and then he's going to try to roll, and then he's gonna move his arms, his shoulder, his hips, and finally his leg, bend his leg, okay? One leg, he's gonna go up, all right? And then he's gonna push himself up with his hands like that, and then he's gonna reach for the chair, and he's gonna slowly get up, putting one hand on the chair, and then He's going to lift himself and place his hand on the chair, <laughs> all right? And then he's gonna get up. Once he gets up, he's gonna reevaluate again because you may have to call 911 just to get them to come and examine you. You don't have to go to the hospital. Just examine you. If you're fine, if they find your vital signs are good and they find that you have no uh, broken bones or, you know, there's no um, immediate danger, they will let you stay home. And you can always refuse to go to the hospital. But if you're in pain and you feel you've injured something, you should always go to the hospital. Okay. Thank you, Harry. Um, you did a great job. And it's always very important to look around and make sure that there's something there um, that you could hold on to so that you can get yourself up. And most people can, can do that. Is if they know how to get on their hands and knees and they're able to, you know, have their arms up, most people can get up from a fall. Has anybody ever fall, fell to get up by themselves? You did you? Yeah. Yeah, and how do you get up? You just... I usually jump up. <laughs> well, then you're I'm fine. I'm falling in front of people and I'm like mortified, yeah. so, yeah. 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 But. Well, it's hard. It's, if you're injured, it's hard to get up from a fall. I'll tell you, I was in a ditch, so I know. But I got up, but it takes time to think about what you're going to be able, what you have to do to, to get out of your situation if there's nobody around, you know? Um, so thank you. Are there any questions for part one? I think we've pretty much covered, you know, and given you tools and tips. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Tom. And um, Nick is also his uh, assistant. Um, master of Tai Chi, thank you so much, Tom. I'm going to put up your, do you want to come in? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I'd just like to welcome all of you here to Tai Chi Acupuncture and Wellness Center. Uh, Kwon Chen is one of my good friends, our resident acupuncturist. He's extremely talented, but he's also an extremely talented martial artist. Um, he comes from a very strong martial arts family. I'm pretty sure he says he was five, but I think he was born doing Tai Chi. <laughs> uh, 
his father runs the uh, largest pro uh, public Tai Chi school in Taiwan and has for many years. Um, he's an international uh, superstar. He's won many awards, won many competitions, both in Tai Chi push and and uh, as well as Tai Chi form. So we're extremely lucky to have him. For you Star Wars fans, his father is kind of like the Yoda of Tai Chi. So wow. <laughs> we're very lucky to have him. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, um, so my part is about Tai Chi. So I'm from Taiwan, you know, I learned Tai Chi with my father. So like Nick said, you know, I learned Tai Chi since I was about five years old, you know, all the way till now. And this is why I'm here today, going to share with you, you know, some tips, you know, you can do by yourself, or you can teach, you know, to your family or your clients, okay? So anyone here done Tai Chi before? Okay, just one? Really? Oh, okay. So how many of you know what is Tai Chi? Just a, a you know pretty basic idea. What's Tai Chi? Just movement. Movement. Okay. Anything else besides movement? Exercise? Yeah, uh, exercise. So actually Tai Chi is not just a movement, it's also not just an exercise. It is a martial art. It is a pretty old, you know, oriental, you know, uh, martial art. You know. In the past, it is a martial art. Today, it's still a martial art. You know, but today it become more and more popular. You know, not too much because the martial art is more because the health benefit you can get from doing it. So this is why you know it's become so popular in China, in Japan, in Taiwan. You know, not much about the martial art, but it's more about the health benefit. And then fall prevention is just one of them. So why why Tai Chi can help people with fall prevention? <laughs> Because it is a martial art. <laughs> so, hey, uh, would you my come here? You know, I always you know, want to ask him to push me. So, yeah, can you try to push me? Yeah, don't be nice. Really push me. Okay, thank you. So why is not easy for him to push me? Because I know how to stand stable. And this is from where? This is from the martial art training. So today they take this part out and teach senior to help them prevent the fall. You know, so this is from the martial art. Okay? So so Tai Chi, you know, can help people with the bed and balance, you know, like you know, because Tai Chi help people pay attention on their weight, you know, pay attention on their state pay attention to their body enlightenment, you know, so this is why Tai Chi, you know, is a very, very good exercise to help people, you know, to prevent the fall. Um, and there are so many health benefits you can get from doing Tai Chi, you know, and then, like I said, the fall prevention is just one of them. You know, actually they can help people with uh, the pain, knee pain, back pain, neck and shoulder pain, you know, insomnia or, you know, migraine, headache, you know, high blood pressure, you know, or even stress, you know, anxiety. It's getting more and more people, they, you know, now that they come to learn Tai Chi because the, the emotion issue, stress, anxiety, you know. So it's getting more and more people, they come to learn Tai Chi because, you know, they just want to learn something can help them relax and calm, you know. So today, you know, we're just going to focus on the fall, okay, fall prevention. And there are so many studies, you know, about, you know, the different, you know, health benefits you can get from learning Tai Chi. And this is just, you know, one compare, you know, Tai Chi to just a regular, you know, stretching exercise. And you can see, you know, the, the group, you know, uh, the Tai Chi group, you know, they like a significant, you know, different, you know, uh, to help people, you know, reduce the, their fall, you know. And, and this is the other one, you know, talking about, it's a pretty new study, you know, talking about Tai Chi actually can help people with anti-aging too. You know, there are so many, you know, study about Tai Chi, you know, if you're interested, you can always, you know, go home and then Google, you know, I'm sure you can find a lot of study. So I'm not going to spend too much time on talking about study, okay? Let's do some exercise together. This is our school in Taiwan. Uh, the first one here, this is my father. And this is the school I grew up, you know, and still operate in Taiwan now, you know. So our school is called Lu Yu Tai Chi School. Um, so today I'm going to teach you, you know, two things, you know, two basic exercises you can do so easy. And these two exercises uh, is the exercise we teach to everyone who came to our school. Okay. 
So the first one is how to stand in Tai Chi. Okay, so we call Gu Yu, you know, tree stand, you know. And then in Chinese Asia, we call the root training. To make you able to stand like a tree, you know, make your roots go deep to be grounded. Okay, so this is what we call root training. So, if you can, you know, I would like everyone to stand up for a few minutes, okay? So the, okay, so now, I would like you to, everyone, you know, to make your feet equal to your shoulder. So don't stand like too wide or too narrow, just about equal to your shoulder. And then the first one they call, you know, we call grounding, you know, so to, which means to make you really stand on the earth, okay? Because a lot of time, you know, one of the reason people fall is because their feet are always empty and their upper body is, you know, more heavy. So that's, you know, that's one of the reasons people fall. So now, okay, here, use your finger to push here, your wind area here. And then to make your upper body bend slightly forward like this. Yeah, and then the next bend your knee a little bit. Yes. So the feeling is like there is a chair behind you and you want to sit on the chair, but just a little bit. So now let's stand up again. Don't bend your knee too much. Some people you bend your knee too much. So how do I know I bend my knee too much? If you watch them, you can barely see your toe, that means you, bend, you might bend your knee too much. Okay, this is one way to tell. The other way is, okay, now everyone start to bend your knee more, more, more. Let everyone bend your knee more and more and more. Keep bending. Pretty soon, you start to feel the pressure on your knee, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. means what? That means you bend your knee too much. Wow. Stand up. Right. So one more time. We want you to able to sink all your way down, but not really bend your knee too much, okay? So let's do one more time. So you can just, you know, pull your heel in, and then bend your knee slightly. Okay, so, so now you can see, is, are you able to see your toe? No. Oh, okay, that means you bend too much. Oh, okay. Higher. <laughs> Did you feel any pressure on your knee? No. no? Okay, that's great. Now, make a big sign. <sighs> Just relax. Relax your shoulder, your chest, your abdomen, everything. Sing. Ah, to pull all your weight down to where? Mm -hmm. To the bottom of your feet. Did you start to feel your feet getting heavier now? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. This is how, you know, what we call grounding. So, really stand on the earth. Okay? The second one is to find your weight. So now, try to feel where's the weight. Is the weight more on the toe or more on the heel? Which one? Heel. Heel? Heel. Okay. Don't put your weight on the heel. The same, don't put your weight on the toe. So where to put your weight? Right behind the ball, about the frontal part of the arch. So here is where you put your weight. You put your weight here. Don't put your weight on the toe, the stand now on the heel, right behind the ball here, the frontal part of the arch, okay? So now try to feel again. Is your weight still more on the heel? If still more on the heel, then try to move your weight slightly forward. And actually you can feel, if you move your weight back to your heel, you're kind of off the balance right away, right? The same, you know, if you move your weight to the toe, you look, you know, it's not stable for you, so try to put your weight right behind the bow. If you put your weight around the frontal part of the arch, actually you should feel your weight pretty average on your whole feet. Okay, so this is what we mean. Find your weight. So now, let's make a big sign again. <sighs> Did you feel your feet getting even more heavier now? Or even a little bit warm? It's really, really good exercise, you know, for people, you know, have cold hand, cold feet. You know, if you have cold hand, cold feet, do this exercise. This exercise can warm up your feet right away. So now the next one is align to your body. So the other thing, you know, people fall easy is because their body always lean too much forward. And this happens a lot when people start to use the walker. You know, because when they start to use the walker, they start to, you know, depend on the walker. After a while, their body starts to become like this which is not helping because they always kind of lean too much for wall will make them fall. So in Tai Chi, we don't want you to make your body lean for wall. We want your body to be straight. So how? 
we use the sequence, your sequence here to be the guideline. If your sequence, your body stick out like this, usually means your body lean too much forward. So now, try to feel, you know, is your body, is your sequence stick out, or oh, this is pretty flat here. So yeah, so you can touch to make sure this is flat, you know. Mm -hmm. But now, some people, you know, when you try to make your sequence flat, Actually, you make your body lean too much backward like this. So now you have to feel is your weight still right behind the bow? And now one more time, make a big sign here. <sighs> yes, take all your way down to make your feet heavy and warm or we call full. Okay? So this is how you stand in Tai Chi and pretty soon. Did you start to feel it's, it's kind of getting getting tired now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I told you, Tai Chi is a what? Martial, martial arts. Art. <laughs> so you are doing a martial art training actually. Okay, and this is a training to help you improve your balance. Okay, everyone take a rest. Take a rest. Okay? Have a seat, take a rest. So look, the best way to help even prevent uh, to help people prevent the fall is to make your leg become stronger again. This is the best way, right? So, Tai Chi, you know, why Tai Chi is so good to help people, you know, prevent the fall? Because it strains your leg again, you know? So you don't have to go to gym, you know, you can just stand like this. Actually, everyone, you know, will just stand like three minutes, right? Um, and then you start to feel, wow, it's kind of tired, not easy. So, hey, because this is a martial art training, you really think all your way down to your feet, which will make your feet tired, but by doing this every day, you know, actually this is a pretty good exercise to help you strengthen your leg. You don't have to go to gym again, you know. This is one, this is kind of the weight, you know, bearing exercise, actually. You know, so this is how you stand in Tai Chi, okay? The next one is how to walk. We call, you know, do you Tai Chi movie meditation walk, you know. So this is how you walk in Tai Chi. So now you know how to stand, right? It's so easy. Let me show you one more time. Make your feet equal to your shoulder. So don't, you know, don't be too wide or too narrow. Just about equal to your shoulder. And then use your finger to push here. You know, your green area, which we call Kua in Chinese, okay? Here, you bend your upper body slightly forward and then you bend your knee a little bit, okay? Or you can just feel, yeah, there's a chair behind you and you want to just sit on the chair, but just a little bit. Don't bend your knee too much, okay? The next one is to find your weight. Where is your weight? Don't put your weight on the heel or on the toe, for sure, not on the side. Put your weight right behind the ball, which will make your weight pretty average on your whole feet. And then, the next one, make your body, make sure your body is straight. So when you, uh, where? To use the sequence, the guideline, you know, if your sequence stick out like this, that means your body lean too much forward to push back, okay? So now, make a big sign. <sighs> Just sink all your way down to make your feet warm, heavy, and full. This is how you stand in Tai Chi. The next one, how to move in Tai Chi. So now, switch your weight to one foot, and then just make a small step forward. Pretty small step, you know, you don't need to make a big step. You know, just pretty tiny step. You know, so move all your way to one foot and make a step forward. So now, how the way Tai Chi want you to move, you know, your weight, you know, you don't want you to just jump to here, you know, just move to here so quick. You want you to switch your weight slowly, gradually. So see, now let's say 100% of my weight on my left foot, right? Now I'm going to switch my weight to my right foot. I want to feel my weight switching. So. 90, 80, 70, you know, gradually switch your way from one foot to the other. All your way to here, and then you make the next step. So now, you know, people will start to pay attention on, on this step. And also start to pay attention on their weight, you know. So when you're able to, you know, pay more attention on your weight, that can help you prevent the fall. And will also help you improve your lower balance. So again, Switch away gradually. We are not rushed to anywhere. Slow yourself down, and then this is what they call meditation work. Slow yourself down, and then switch away gradually. 90, 80, 70, 60, all your way to here. 
The same when you walk backward in a straight way, gradually 90, 80, 70, push your way back. So this is the first thing. The second thing is how you move your weight. So now you know, okay, you have to pay attention to your state, also pay attention to your weight, right? So the next one is how to move your weight. Tai Chi don't want you, again, don't want you to just jump to here. Tai Chi want you to use your foot to push. So, you know, they call, you know, this is the, the feeling like, you know, the, uh, they, they call, you know, the camel, you know, walking in the, in the desert, you know, walking on the sand. But maybe we can make this nicer, you know, we are walking on the beach, right? <laughs> so, this is all the sand here, right? Mm -hmm. So now when you walk, okay, your back foot, try to feel, you push your way down, you want to make a footprint on the sand. This is all the sand here, nice beach outside, you want to make a footprint here, use your foot to push, to make a step, you know, a footprint on the floor. And then make a step forward, slowly switch away. But use where? Use your foot to push, 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 push. This is how you move in Tai Chi. Did you ever see you know, in Chinese painting or calligraphy, you know, usually it's a small boot, a uh, small ball made by bamboo, right? You know, and usually it's an old guy, you know, use a long stick, you know, a long pole, you know, try to what? To push, to make the boat. The same feeling. Now this is your stick here, and you want to push. Use your foot to push down. To switch your weight to one foot, you know, and make a step forward, and then the same push. This is how you know you move in Tai Chi. So the first thing is, for sure, stand well, right? So we call the three stand, and now switch all your way to one foot. Make a small step forward. Don't make a big one. You know, just a pretty tiny step. And then when you switch your weight, pay attention on your weight slowly, 90, 80, and then use where? Use your foot to push all your way from the back foot to the front foot. And then make a, the next step. Again, push, 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 all your way from one foot to the other. This is how people move in Tai Chi. The same. When you walk backward, you know, move your way back. Your front foot push, Gradually 90, 80, 70, you know, all the way back, stay back, and then you push, 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 push. This is how people walk in Tai Chi, you know. Again, you don't have to be rushed, you know, slow yourself down. This is what people call, you know, meditation walk. Because you pay attention on your state, you pay attention on your weight, you pay attention on your, you know, the, your foot. This can also help people calm themselves down. I just watch my step, pay attention on my, on my way, and then I walk slowly. This is a meditation too, okay? So, this is how people walk in Tai Chi. Any questions so far? No? It's so easy, right? <laughs> the next one is how we can bring Tai Chi into your life. So, what does that mean? You don't have to go to a Tai Chi class, you don't have to go to the gym, you know, you don't, you don't have to buy a, a video to learn Tai Chi. You can just do this anytime, anywhere, right? We stand up a lot, right? You know, even when I'm talking to you, I'm standing up, you know, or when you buy in the shop, you know, you know when you, you know, do the grocery shopping, you know, when you wait in the line, you stand up, right? So from now, I will start to encourage you, you know, when you stand up, you know, try to stand on one foot instead of the two, you know, and then do what? The three stand, the Tai Chi stand training. This, you know, can help you strengthen your leg every day. When you feel tired, you switch away to the other one. No one knows what you're doing, but you know, actually, you're doing a martial art training, which will gradually start to improve your balance and make your legs strong. You might feel, yeah, today I can only stand like three minutes. You know, that's fine. Switch your weight to the other one. And then next time, you, know, you might feel, wow, actually I can stand for five minutes now. Every day, you know, you're looking for one minute or two minutes more. And that won't take you too long, one month or two months. you feel, wow, actually I can stand much longer now. You know, so this is the best way to help you prevent the fall. Make your legs stronger again. And then uh, the same, you know, you walk to everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so the same, you know, or even just in the morning, you know, when you walk in your own backyard, you know, slow yourself down. 
to do some you know, Tai Chi work, right? You know, calm yourself down, yeah, do some Tai Chi work. This can help you a lot. Even just in your own living room, you know, just do some, you know, walking, you know. This can help you a lot, you know, to bring all your attention back, you know, and all your bring your sensation back. So this is what we mean, bring Tai Chi into your life. This is something you can do anywhere, anytime. Cost you nothing. And but so good for you, you know. So because we go out to teach a lot of senior, which is much much older than most of you here, you know, they are just doing nothing every day. So why not, you know, to, they have stand up for a few minutes, start to stretch their leg. That's much better way, you know, you know, to help them prevent the fall. You know, instead of just you know wash your case, anything on the ground, you know, or you know need other people, you know, like I mean rely on the worker, you know. Why you spend some of your own time to strengthen your leg, you know, make your leg become stronger again? So this is what we mean bring Tai Chi into your life. And this one is the acupressure, you know. So I am also the acupuncturist here, you know. I know, you know, actually there's a lot of point, acupuncture point can help people, you know, with their, uh, with their balance too. And they're so easy too, everyone can do that, you know. So you can, you know, uh, uh, share with your friend or with your client, you know, so the first point, good point to learn is uh, we call Wei Zhong, you know, or they call the block 40, this is the um, the name of the point, you know, see, where is the point? It's right behind the knee, right here, so everyone can reach so easy, even just sitting, you know, it's right here, right behind your knee, this is the point they call Wei Zhong, which is a great point for all the back issue and the leg issue. This is a big point. So there are so many, like 300 something acupuncture point, right? But actually, you know, only like 30 to 50 is the point you use a lot. And this is the point, you know, I would say one of the most 10 important points in acupuncture. It's right behind your knee kneecap, which can help you with all the back issue. If you have back pain, you swallow your back, you know, what can you do? You can do some gentle massage on this point, just gradually, slowly, gently. You know, you might feel some, oh, wow, it'll be so, wow. And then, yeah, that means there's some problem there. So you can do more, you know, but pretty gentle, just a few minutes, okay? This is a great point for to people, you know, with the back pain or the weakness of the leg or the knee pain, okay? And the other one is the, um, it's pretty, you know, good point to know is the, the knee top, you know, and the knee eye, you know, actually this is all acupuncture point too, you know, you know the knee eye, right? The knee top is just the one, right, you know, on the top of your, um, the cap here, you know, so right here on the top, you know, your knee cap here, this is they call the knee top, and then the knee eye, so when you bend your knee, you can see the two, you know, flex, you know, the like dancing, right? This is, they call the knee eye. You know, so these three points actually is pretty good point for you to do, you know, all the time do some, you know, self, you know, gentle massage. Anyone here have the knee pain? No? Okay, great. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, this is a great exercise for you to do at home, you know, or you can teach someone, your family, you know, your client, you know, when they have knee pain, you know, when they are working there, you know, do nothing, you know, why not, you know, you know when you, even just when you're watching TV, you can do something like this. You know, every time you're so gentle, easy, you don't have to go so deep, just so gentle, you know, that can help you with the knee pain a lot. A lot of time people worry about fall, it's because they have pain. The knee pain is warm to them, you know. So, again, you know, instead of rely on the doctor, try to do something by your own. This is something, you know, when you come in, you pay me money to needle there for you. Why not just stay home and then do occupation for yourself, <laughs> right? And take you like five minutes or ten minutes, you know, that can help you a lot. And this is a pretty good, you know, uh, thing to help you, you know, uh, maintain your knee, you know, even you don't have the really knee pain, you know, but just something good for you to do, you know, even when you're watching the TV, you know, all you can do for your friend too, you know. But this is, I did teach the point, you know, to how to reach because, you know, I just teach, you know, this, this few points because they're so easy to, for you t yourself to reach. Some point you might need other people to do for you, but this is the point you can do by yourself, right? So this is just something you know, for you to don't, uh, know, you know, this is a great point to help people with the knee pain, the leg weakness, you know, or, you know, um, um, 
now we're in the neuropathy, you know. If you're in neur neuropathy, the number is tingling, you know, I would say it's better for you to do some toe exercise. You know, you can do like toe exercise, like this is the toe, this is your beetle, we, we pretend this is your feet, you, this is your toe, right? You can just do some, you know, toe exercise. You put your weight on this one, and then you put the weight on the second one. Just try to do this by yourself. You can do this when you're sitting or standing up. This is totally fine. After you do this for a while, this can help people bring their sensation back. You know, it can also help them you know, reduce the numbness too. So it's a great exercise for people with the new apathy. You know, so um, any questions so far? Okay, so I'll give this back to Bonnie, okay? Thank you. Thank you. So we have a little mini quiz for everybody. Any questions so far? But I'm sure. Whoops! I don't give you the answers yet. <laughs> so true or false? Falls are an inevitable part of aging. False. Yeah, false. You're right. They're not. It's a normal part of aging. And uh, strength and balance exercises and all of the stuff we've talked about today help prevent falls. So it's important to keep that information um, close to you and share it with people you think might be at risk. True or false? Falls can be avoided if you stay home and avoid activities. Oh. Oh. True. Most falls take place within a person's residency. And uh, for the number of reasons that we listed um, earlier on, and Mary talked about. So it's important to assess your environment and the environment of those you care about. Um, true or false, taking any medication may increase your risk of falling. True. It's true. Any medications, and we also talked about you know, herbal supplements and, uh, and other things that you might, even sometimes certain foods interact with medication. So you need to be aware of everything you're putting into your body. Everything you put in matters, and it can, you can have an interaction with. Um, true or false, using a walking aid like a cane or a walker uh, will make you more dependent. False. It is false. It's correct. Sometimes a lot of seniors think that it will make them more dependent, but it doesn't. It actually gives them the independence to keep moving on. There are a lot of them fear falling, and this is an aid to help them uh, with their activity. And then uh, true or false, a Tai Chi moving meditation walk is only good for fall prevention. False. That's false. It's good for all that uh, Quan had talked about, for the mental health, for the physical health, for strength and mobility. And any questions on anything that was talked about today? Anyone have any questions? So everybody's going to go out and be really careful this winter <laughs> with the ice <laughs> and the snow. And just think about some of the things we talked about. Just be more aware of when you're walking and your surroundings and your environment. And we'd like to thank you. And please, um, Fill out the sign-in sheet so we can give you your certificates and the evaluation forms. We appreciate you coming, and uh, thank you very much.